Welcome to CarePod, a safe place to educate, inspire, and renew the caregiver. Listen in with our host, Dr. Kipley Bell, as she interviews different experts along the caregiving journey. Kelly Kelly from Modern Earth Design was a really uh, enjoyable podcast for me. I went to high school with Kelly and, you know, she's an example of how the legacy of our parents uh, are carried on through the work of our hands. She shared how her mom used to take her to thrift stores and various outlets, and she learned how to design a space, uh, even on a limited income growing up. And that has now crafted her business in modern earth and wellness design. And so she's able to craft unique spaces for clients, both uh, commercial and residential clients and intersect what she learned as a little girl uh, through her mom, who ultimately succumbed to uh, complications from Alzheimer's. So really heartfelt, uh, conversation I had with Kelly. Listen in. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I'm here with my dear, dear friend, Kelly Pelly of Modern Earth Design. And I enlisted her help today to chat about, you know, interior design spaces in multi generational living, um, accommodating for the needs of our aging loved ones. Um, I've known Kelly for decades. Uh, we went to <laughs> high school together. Yeah. So I'm just happy to have a colleague yeah. in the space to help educate us around this topic. Oh, girl, I love you and thank you. Like, this is, <laughs> you know, this is such an honor. Like, I, when we talked just recently and I was just like, everybody knows that Kipley was going to be like super successful. And, and just the fact that you, you know, you're showing your heart to you by creating this type of platform so that people are getting help. That, that just shows the kind of person that you are. So I just feel really honored that you would even have me. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's a public journal, you know, it's, Anybody that that's a caregiver, you know, we know that it it is, you know, there are pain points and there are highs and lows, you know, but there's also ways to develop solutions to kind of to, to decrease that stress. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I, I want to kind of walk through your personal journey as well, how you got to uh, when we spoke recently, we talked about how, you know, your mom used to take you to these stores and be creative around spaces. And then now look at you today, which is amazing. Well, I mean, she, my mom was always creative and always trying to make things out of nothing, you know, and which is a talent that I highly, um, Oh, sorry, my dog is here, but that I, I just highly admire about my mom. But, um, you know, we grew up and we were we didn't have very much money, you know. And so my dad would just like take us to consignment stores or flea markets and all that stuff. And my mom, you know, would save her pennies and buy certain items. And then we'd come home and she would be like, you know, Kelly, you're going to help me rearrange the whole house for maybe one item you know but it was like that foundation of learning yes like how to rearrange spaces but also celebrating just the simple things it didn't have to be anything extravagant and so um to create those moments with my mom and then also now doing that for clients you know today is is a is a huge factor but um with my mom, my mom um, died a year ago and she had Alzheimer's. And so, um, you know, the signs were there. You know, a lot of people say, I guess it's like tw about 20 years, sometimes people are suffering and you don't really know because you're just thinking, oh yeah, maybe they're just being forgetful or whatever it may be. But um, I was just talking with my sister recently and, and 
I was like, you know, 10 years ago, I, these certain things were happening. And, you know, we didn't understand, but those were like the signs of, of stuff going on. So, um, but the thing is, it's like, as they ended up moving to Oklahoma to be with my one sister and, um, and then my visits there, just seeing the decline, but then also being like, how can, how can we still connect? Because they were living in a multi-generational home as well, right? So you have my parents and then it's my sister and then her daughter. And so with that, it was just like, when I came, like, what could I bring to the table that could also help them and, and make things a little bit easier? So, um, and then to see those, uh, the different stages of the disease. Of the decline, yeah. Yeah, and um, so, yeah, it, I remember going and, and visiting and, and I think all of this ties into design because life is a design in itself and, um, and creating those things. And when, when we think about like interior design too, you think about engaging the five senses. Okay. So you always want that. If you don't have that, it's almost like a space can fall flat, right? There's no feeling, there's no sensory things going on. So <clears throat> When I used to go there, um, you know, food, food was a big deal. So, you know, there was food like my mom would eat, but she didn't enjoy it. You could tell like she was not connected. Mm -hmm. Right? So making foods that maybe reminded her of her childhood, right? So I'm, a, you know, we're Spanish bringing that that factor in so okay well let's make some you know empanadas or let's make some you know puerto rican rice and beans you know whatever it may be but those things you would start to see her engage again you know those those connecting factors right because it was sensory to taste right the smell um and then it's also about touch right and you know, you probably can even bring some light to this as well. But um, she wanted things that were very soft to the touch, right? So it was like bringing certain blankets in that had like, you know, just a really soft texture and 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 maybe even little like bumps or ridges or whatever, but that were soft so that she kept touching over and over and over again, but it would bring some sense of comfort to her and calm mm -hmm. down. So all those types of things, you know, it's like you want to make sure that when you're having those types of spaces or or dealing with those multi-generational things, um, you're engaging, yes, a younger generation, but you're not forgetting what also connects the uh, older person to things that will bring them comfort as well. but it still can all be beautiful and be fluid together. Absolutely. It's interesting too, because um, I've seen a lot of research around cueing and contrasting. So, you know, the, the grab bars in the shower or the bathroom are red or green primarily. Uh, so, you know, what do you say to a client that now comes in and that, you know, mom has Alzheimer's, taking your, your family example, you know, they're living in a multi-generational space, but you know what, I really don't want red grab bars in my calming mint green space, you know, so kind of under, you know, helping a client to reach a happy medium in terms of contrast. And you brought up a really good point about texture as well in terms of um like they have they have um activity blankets that have right. different textures and different things to do to keep your loved one occupied so right. doubling as a throw or over your couch how what have exactly. you exactly and then but for the person that is like okay they're living in my house you can still have the beauty right mixed with the practicality you know, and so the thing is, well, okay, so we're talking about grab bars, for example. Um, 
this is now everybody's situation is different, right? Because some people that, for example, suffer from Alzheimer's or dementia, they don't all act the same. Correct. Right? So I can speak for my mother and maybe this will hopefully help somebody else. Maybe they can take some, some things from that. Um, go back to maybe the colors that your that, that parent loved. Mm. So like right. my mother wasn't about like, for example, red, but my mother did love soft colors. So the thing is, then do that in the space, do certain elements. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the grab bar. It could just be maybe the shower curtain. So, you know what I'm saying? So it makes it more like appealing because sometimes, you know, they might get into aspects where they'll fight to go into certain places or do certain things. Well, bring things that that bring uh, memories back of what they really did love. That's a good, really good point. Right. And so once you do that, instead of like, okay, this is like, this is what is being said. This is like the typical things that we're supposed to do. You should, you need to engage with your parent, really know who they are. That's why it's, I think it's so important to have re, obviously relationship before anything happens, right? Because that's all a part of beautiful and creating a beautiful space, even maybe after the fact. So, you know, once you know those types of things about them, then you can add those elements in. So yeah, grab bars. I always think no matter what, when someone's dealing with um, things in the mind, calming colors, hands down. I don't think, me personally, I don't think contrasting harsh colors work. They can cause really uh, um, certain emotional responses. So for example, for me, for me as a, I am not a fan of red. Red for me makes me upset. So in my house, you will not see any red, right? It brings out some emotional responses for me. I don't like like emergency or 911 or institutionalized. Right. Got you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. White. If you do super stark white, white can have that, has that institutional feel to it. If you want to do white, do warmer whites. Do whites that have a little bit undertone of browns in it or whatever it is. But like you want to create a space where it feels safe, like a hug, right? And since like, you know, um, with the with like people with Alzheimer's where they're very, they want a lot of touch. Touch is very reassuring, but you can do that with color. You do that with textures. You do that with sounds in the space, you know, like I know my mother loved music, loved listening to music. Well, you know, there's certain music that can create more of a, of a heightened sense of like, you know, uneasiness, or you can bring a music that brings calm. So you, it's like, you want to have that, that space where it just like, person with all the stuff that's going on inside of them that brings a sense of balance and a sense of peace so yeah grab bars for sure grab bars you want it doesn't have to be obviously like these bright colors but they can have texture so like they're like knurled that's the texture right so you want to have stuff that when they go into the bath they can grab and it's not going to slip Join the private Facebook community, International Caregiver Exchange, a global community of caregivers. Come on in and catch a glimpse of my own personal caregiver journey, all while being educated and encouraged. International Caregiver Exchange. It's not going to slip. So I really love this point about the five senses. So you come into a space and you say, I'm going to accommodate my loved one based on them because personhood is central to any teaching, right? So if I'm advocating for my aging loved one, I want to say, I want to develop a color scheme that is familiar to them and is desirable to them. 
Uh, I want to appeal to their sense of hearing and smell and sight and touch. You know, that really is a, 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 a nice uh, teaching point in terms of it makes it relatively easy then to say, oh, I can walk in the Lowe's and now mom likes X, Y, Z. I can just pick out these things or home goods or what have you rather than saying, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think it's awesome. It doesn't have to be expensive. So mm -hmm. like, for example, like uh, I had mentioned to you about like my father. So he's had a stroke and he's pretty much, you know, can't, can't use his right side, okay? So now it's like, he, he has to you do a walker and all that stuff. Well, he's talking to me about, Kelly, I would love to come see you, you know? I mean, especially now my mom's not, Oh, you know, here and it's like more connection, right? He wants to travel and, and, and come. So I'm like, okay, what do I need to do to make this experience for him pleasant, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, especially as a host, when if you have a party or if you're inviting your friends over, you want to have maybe foods that they might enjoy, you enjoy as well but you want to create an atmosphere that, hey, this is like, okay, we're having a card game. Well, what do you need to have to have a card game? What type of drinks, what type of food creates that type of atmosphere or whatever it may be? Well, it's the same thing. So it's like, what do I need to do to have this for my father, right? So he's a, in the walker, he's doing a walker and sometimes he uses a, a wheelchair. Okay, well, I need to have enough space between my furniture for him to get around so do i i need to edit maybe right put some things away doesn't mean i have to completely rearrange and get rid of everything i love it just makes things easier for him okay and then the other thing would be um area rugs are a trip hazard yeah absolutely right so they're a trip hazard okay so can you can you go without your area rugs for a little while or if you're like someone who's like i have to have an area rug i just have to do it well you know what there's options so there's also um they're they're almost like a mat but they look like an area rug and they're flat and so they're not a trip hazard you can put that down or you can even do like um indoor outdoor rugs that are extremely low profile pretty much not a trip hazard if you have to do that. Also an indoor outdoor rug, which I, which I actually put down over here. Cause I was like, mm -hmm. just getting ready for him or, you know, for this coming year that if he spills anything, easy cleanup, I don't have to worry about it staining my rug. Right. You know? right, right. Right. So it's like what you could still have the stylish. You just modify. Right. And then I also had a big, I had a big um, coffee table. So I can just kind of go over here. Yeah. 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 I had a huge coffee table here. And then, so I was just like, that's not going to work. So I went to an estate sale. I found a little round table. For there, you go. there you go. Right? There you go. Very easy. He'll be able to go right around. That's not even a, a big deal. I still get my coffee table. He still gets a chance to move. So it's just like if, if everybody thinks of a way that you're still getting what you want, but you're also honoring your parents, right? For all the sacrifices also that they've made for you, then it just creates a beautiful experience all the way around. So they get still get a chance to enjoy the beauty of your space, of the home that they're able maybe to live in or whatever, but then it's also functional for the generations. Absolutely. Uh, so what what's your take home message for families that like yourself, they've had someone pass on now, you know, you you want to kind of continue, you're living your mother's legacy in the early seeds that she planted in you to now uh, create something special out of nothing per se, right? Or very little. And now you are accommodating for the needs of your dad. How do you still keep mom fully present, especially during uh, the holiday season? How do I keep my mother present? Yes. 
<laughs> and, and how do you keep your aging loved one present? You know, for those that now, you know, they have lived this period. They live the time where they've advocated for their, their loved one, their aging loved one already. But now it's like, okay, mom's gone, pops is gone. This, you know, or, you know, I, I still have this loved one here, but how do I still keep the one that's gone on? Like you're living your yeah, mom. I am. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you, if we're talking about multi generational living, right? Or, and if you have children, per se, creating those, those moments that you also had with them. Right. And so, for example, one of the things that my mom used to do is um, she, was, she was always very crafty. Right. So we always made our ornaments. Right. Ornaments was like a big deal. So how how can we do that now? So I would just still go like I've done it differently with my kids, where now what we do is every year we get a brand new ornament that represents us that year. I don't always have the time to like sit and do crafts, but I'm like, how can I take those memories that I really appreciate about my parent and then do it in my way, right? And then it's it's new, but it still has a touch back to- I know. love that. So it becomes, it's your new tradition, but it's traditional in that it's it's a, it's a, it's a legacy. Love it. Right. Love so it. we always did a new ornament. We should be always created different ornaments, right? Every year, my mom would be like, let's make snowmen, let's make reindeer or whatever. And it was so, I, I love that. But every year now, so my kids, like, We'll fill up the tree with ornaments that we picked. We put the year on it and it will represent maybe what was important to us that year. So then when they leave this house and they have their own home, they take those ornaments and those memories with them. Love that. They put that on their own tree and then they can recreate that with, you know, whenever they get married and they have their own children, however they want to do that. Right. But now we have something that's been tied back, but it started with my mom. Love that. Love that. Or, you know, again, yes, memories with grandma or memories or grandpa. You know, I as I just had in the Facebook group, we had this whole this Etsy concept of taking passed down recipes and repurposing them in a dishcloth or a baking. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it's just yeah. like, you know, you take those things and just reconfigure it in your way. And it's still like honoring and bringing and bringing those memories. I have my mother's um, albums, like Puerto Rican Christmas albums from when she was little and I play them in the house. And so my kids are like, wow, what's that music? You know, like, they know, you know, but they, yes. but they can go back and be like, oh, well, this was grandma's. This was mama's. That's, that's what they call her. This was mama's music or whatever. And so it's the same thing even with my father today. Like I'll ask him, music was a big deal to my dad too. And um, a quick little story, like he took my mother on one of their first dates to um, a club in New York. And it was before um, Frank Sinatra was really famous. Wow. The first date, right? So my daughter listens to Frank Sinatra. You know, okay. she's like two years old and, and listens to Frank Sinatra. So, and then I asked my dad, what music did you like to listen to? And so then I'll go to record stores and I just have, I have a ton of records here. So when he comes, guess what's going to end up playing? Love that. Love that. Yeah. Absolutely. So give us your top five again, your recap, your top five tips for, you know, multi-generational interior design accommodation for your aging loved ones. Tell us how a client could reach out to you for their own personal consultation, how to follow you on social media, et cetera. So top five things, obviously, I, I would say would be a lot of texture. If you're dealing with people with Alzheimer's, especially um, soft textures, even in clothes and furniture, make sure that um, you have furniture pieces that they can easily get up and down. 
That's a huge, huge deal. Um, one of the things I, I, I will say is like, you know, last year we finally got rid of a sofa that we had for 20 years. It was like done. So, you know, I was just like, so when we went shopping for furniture, we were not just shopping. Oh, this is the most cool thing to have, but we were like, we're in, we're heading towards 50. And so what furniture piece is going to take us into our next stage? And, and that's how we need to, we need to look at design too. It's like, don't design just for today, design mm. for the future, mm. think about the future. Think about, okay, I'm, I have adult children. I'm probably going to have grandchildren here at this house. Can this furniture hold up to me being older uh, I have young adult children and grandchildren. How can how how can I live in a way that can accommodate many people, and it also helps with hosting people. So when you have different people coming to your house and you're entertaining, you want everybody as much as possible to feel comfortable. So furniture pieces is a big deal. Um, you want to have make sure your walkways are clear. You don't want to have too much clutter. Right. So every areas that they can just move around freely and they don't feel like they're going to bump in or they have to be isolated to only a certain area. You want them to feel like they can go into many different areas. Um, another thing I would like to I would say is um, there are many uh, types of dishware that is beautiful, but not glass or ceramic. Because when you're dealing with someone with dementia or Alzheimer's, that they happen to get upset and they break, you're dealing with, and if you're not around, you're dealing with a, a hazard to their life, really, um, their safety. So you want to make sure that you want to, you can get some dishware that is not going to be harmful to them. Good point. Okay. Very safety, good. Point. Safety, safety. And that stuff is like home goods. Marshalls, Coles. I mean, it yeah, yeah, all the way around. Yeah, um, and always try to keep your atmosphere very soft, very peaceful as much as possible, and be very engaging and very, um, you know, uplifting to that person. Because whenever you have a positive attitude, atmosphere is everything in the home. It doesn't matter how beautiful a home looks, you can walk into a space and you can feel its atmosphere. Atmosphere is everything. Make sure that you you want to have a good uh, outlook, a good not negativity as much as possible. And it will actually can make a, a home that is not as designed, but it'll make a it can make a home feel like this is where even I want to be here. And it's and it might not be everything put together as perfect as a magazine right there is everything and right. it'll make people want to be there and and hang out so yeah Those are some yes so tell us how we can find you if a client wanted to consult with you regarding their home space yeah um you can go to kelly pelly k-e-l-o-y Pelly, P E L L E Y dot com. Um, my website is, I have to, you know, upgrade it. Um, I'm still working on that, but you can still get in contact with me through that website. You can follow me on Instagram, Modern Earth Design. You can follow me on Facebook, same thing, Modern Earth Design as well. Beautiful. I'm so honored to spend this time with you. You know, it's important to share our stories and to look back and say, wow, you know, this is how my life was shaped as a result of, you know, the one that I care most about. So it's just awesome the way you brought forth these ideas of, you know, incorporating our senses into interior design and being mindful of how our legacy is passed on and, and things that we can do that are very simple, that have will have great meaning. I mean, an ornament over time that can now be passed on when we pass on, essentially, to our children. So I, I, I think it's awesome. And I really thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And you know, the, the most important thing is to create memories. You Memories mean everything, you know? And at the end of the day, if you can create those beautiful moments and all those beautiful moments incorporate into design, you're good to go. 
golden. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. I really, really appreciate this. And oh, you're, this you're is awesome. Me, right? I love your heart and, and what you're doing. I just makes me so happy. <laughs> Great information right from the source. For more information on how to care give like a boss, check out impactfulcaregiving.com. Want to be a guest on the show? Contact us at carepod at impactfulcaregiving.com.